we've come to Kempton Park for a very important Gallops work morning with some of the leading contenders from the Nicky Henderson yard, the likes of Constitution Hill, Epiton and John Bond strutting their stuff this morning. And we've also had the opportunity to see Harry Fry, who's brought none other than last year's Cheltenham Festival heroine, Love Envoy. Let's see what happened this morning. Nikki, another important morning for you here at Kempton. It's a tradition that you like to, to bring the horses out here. Why is it at this point that you do like to bring them out to Kempton especially? I think, well, we'd obviously we're a fortnight away. It's mm. just a good opportunity to go and give them an away day. And, a, and they don't need to go, it's not hammer and tongs. It's just mm. to have a nice time and enjoy themselves. And yeah, it, it's, a, it's, it's good timing. Mm -hmm. We've always done it. Um, and it's sort of worked in the past, so we've stuck to our guns. It's amazing, we've got historically all the times of all the gallop. We've, done, we've, oh, really? we've worked exactly the same distance. All we're actually doing is timing yeah. the last lap, winning post to winning post. Yeah. And over the years, there's never been more than a couple of seconds in it. So horses like, say, John Bond, who might have done this last year, well, you'll know if he's a little bit quicker this time around than he would have been... This time we could, last we year. could look it up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I haven't got it with me now, no, but you know, you can, you know, they've, they've always been within mm. very close proximity to every year because yeah. we just had hiring them over one lap. Yeah. They've actually worked two miles, mm -hmm. but the first bit to the winning post first time, we're not timing. So okay. you're just, just timing them over one lap. Okay, so it's, so it's interesting, and obviously, you do it, you're a creature of habit, you like to do this every year, but it's actually very important for the likes of Constitution Hill. He probably has only seen the insides of Seven Barrows since Boxing Day, well, since or whenever Boxing it was. Day, he has, yeah. I mean, he hasn't been, it hasn't been anywhere since here, mm -hmm. but, um, on Boxing Day, yeah. But considering laid back type of horse anyway, probably you don't really know if he's actually taken a huge amount of it, but it's just the. Well, he had just to try and put, you know, he didn't take any big blows or anything. He wasn't, <laughs> you know, yeah. I think he's fit. <laughs> <laughs> you showed him off to everyone at your press day a couple of weeks ago and you lifted up the rug and said he's still got a bit of tightening up to do. Have you seen any difference over the last couple I think of we're weeks? getting there. Funny enough, the one that needs to tighten up looks if she need, or she's good, doing a bit too well is Epitont. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we've been, the last week with, you know, just looking at her in a, in a box, We've all been commenting how, you know, she does look a little bit porky, mm -hmm. and she did need, she didn't need the gallop mm -hmm. as, as such. You know, she wasn't blowing much. She worked very, very well. Mm -hmm. and I was very pleased with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she, she's the one that looks if she wants to. She could tighten up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and so for her, Constitution Hill, the others, how, what, what is the routine now for the next couple of weeks? How many? Well, they'll have a, work? they'll, they'll go quietly for a few days now, and they'll be cantering a weekend. I guess they'll do a bit of work at home, probably in a week today. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be. They'll have one more serious bit of work at home, mm -hmm. and then goes quietly down to shorter and sharper and you know hope they all stay in one piece and what we saw with constitution hill there him getting a good lead off the other two and is this the kind of work that you normally do with him give him a lead and then just let him just do his do his job is that what you see every well, that day was, it was that amazing was, for us that was like having two gallops in one yeah. the other two were just doing their own thing together mm -hmm. and nico was doing his own thing okay. and as you could say he was probably 10, 15 lengths behind yeah. with the circuit to go, then right, joined then. them and then let him enjoy himself on his own. Because mm -hmm. there's, we, we haven't got anything really that could go, as I say, you, you wouldn't work Epiton mm -hmm. with them. That would be, just be silly. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's, it's difficult to do it. I keep telling Michael, I really want to, I want a mile and a quarter horse off the flat, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of scouring around a few <laughs> flat Charlie trainers, seeing if, <laughs> seeing if somebody would lend me one to jump in the mile marker. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just to take him mm -hmm. for a mile. Um, but um, it, it worked. What we what, what we did work because the other two were just doing their own thing, mm -hmm. but they were still they were there to help him. Of course, and it, yeah, it was it was quite fantastic really to see it. Earlier on, we saw John Bon. Still gets quite warm a little bit. Gets thinks today, about yeah. things a little bit. Yeah. That clearly he sort of doesn't even think about it much more than what he has to do when he when he's got his work in front of him is that yeah. just something that we expect from him and if we see it at Cheltenham yeah it's it's just that's him yeah I think so yeah, yeah. he is I mean he did you know he he needed it was amazing how much he needed that run at Warwick the other day and that's mm -hmm. why I needed to bring him here yeah okay and then the other a couple of the others we saw Balco Coastal looking very very well in himself happy with how his I am I just sort of have a niggly feeling that he could have been a bit sharper than he was at Sandown the other day he came mm. and really looked if he was going to win the race yeah I don't say he didn't come home he, he did the other horse probably just outstayed him mm -hmm. but I just always felt that he was just probably on the big side and I could probably get him a bit I think I could eke out a little bit of improvement from mm -hmm. Sandown mm -hmm. whether it's going to be enough I would think the Turners is what you're running yeah um, so, but I, I, I think we can, we can find a little bit, yeah, um, a little bit more than what we had at Sandown. So I, I think it'll put him in the hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a t in a tough division. Yeah. The, a couple of the handicappers, Captain Morgs. I saw Paul O'Brien on on board today. He's looking well, as is, and been a long time since we've seen him, mm. but um, must be pleased with him. Well, they've all. We, we're gonna. We looked as if we could easily run six in the attempts. Gosh. <laughs> um, you may as well. Willie Mullins does it every yeah. day, so that's the way I can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the chances are, call me Lords in there. He'd be the top weight of them. Call me Lords, Steeler March, Captain mm -hmm. Morgs, Mill Green, um, Walking on Air. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, they they've all got, they all get in. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've all got chances. Yeah. So why not? Yeah, fun race to, to have them in. And then finally, the mares. Um, obviously, as you say, Epiton, you know, might need to tighten up a little bit. She still works well. She's clearly a very mm. good workhorse. I, I know that. And then Marie's Rock looking brilliant. Slight conundrum now with those two. Do you line them up together or do you separate them? I don't know. I'm going to talk to Tom Palin, who looks after the Midland Park team and does a great job. And we, we've been discussing for some time and we put her in the stairs because we thought she might well be a stayer and th that is possible and actually looking at that this morning it might look even more possible I thought mm -hmm. I shall be talking to Tom on the way home and we don't have to decide now I, we don't know where Epitant's going at the moment mm -hmm. you know I talked to JP I'm sure I'll be talking to him pretty shortly um, and you know it, it depends if Constitution Hill is in good shape, which we think he is, you've got to, you know you've got a strong champion hurdle. Mm -hmm. um, Honeysuckle's going to go to the mares. Yeah. If Epitome went to the mares, then it's an even more of a reason to try and think that Marie's Rock could go three. Yeah. So it spreads them out if that's the way we go it depends what epitome does yeah and obviously you know. we know i know now our update on buzz is that he won't go to cheltenham so that leaves you with no runner as it stands if you don't if marie's rock well, buzz up. yes i mean you know we've been ticking along quietly and mm -hmm. hoping to get there but we've really come to the conclusion it's not the sensible thing to do mm -hmm. first run for a very long time off three miles undulating jumping and all that after his injury and, it, and he's been going great mm -hmm. but I think it's probably too big a task first time out mm -hmm. and that we could either look at Aintree or a flat race even. Mm -hmm. um, I think the chances are that you know if, if some rain never comes and that's the important thing it's rather held us up the last month yeah. on you know, not being able to work him on the grass so we'd sort of as you know come to the conclusion that it's yeah. Probably Cheltenham isn't the right thing to do. Yeah, the right thing for him. There looks like there'll be more like snow around than there is going to yeah. be rain. <laughs> um, final one, we haven't seen him here today, but Shishkin, how is he? Happy Shishkin, with him? Good. Well, he doesn't need to come here. He only had a race yeah. a fortnight ago. So, you know, the, the, him and, and Lucia's and things, you know, they're, 
they only ran last weekend down walking on air and you know those sort of horses they they, they didn't need to be here mm -hmm. um they can do what they've just had a race and they'll, they'll work away at home okay brilliant well thank you nikki great to see you best of luck for the next two weeks that all goes according to plan um, michael it's been brilliant to see constitution hill i thought that was an awesome piece of work that he just showed us off what's what's it like every time you see him because he does it surprise you the, the things he does like that well it's i think it's really difficult for um amateurs i suppose owners to really work out what a piece of work is i mean you always want to see your I guess you want to see your horse go nicely and finish in front. <laughs> um, sometimes they work really well when they don't finish in front. So it, it's really about the feedback you get from mm -hmm. people. And one of the things that Nico always says is how easily he does his work, that it sort of it feels different from other horses. Mm -hmm. So he said it was perfect and it was all very easy. And I, I don't know, anyway, it, he looks happy. Yeah. and well and the guy that rides him at Mickey's every day says he feels great and Jaden looks after him says he's in a good place and um, the people that travel with him said he slept he goes to sleep <laughs> and so he seems to be his normal relaxed self yeah it seems like everyone's unlike just, me <laughs> it seems like he's the kind of horse everyone wants to sort of uncover work out I saw an article the other day saying you know, when does he get angry? Is there is there sort of aspects of his characters that, that we sort of, what is the real Constitution Hill? But he's just a laid back horse that does everything on the track. It's that simple. He's, he is in reality, the, the um, person that I've always tried to portray, which is being very relaxed, but underneath, you know, it's a bit like a swans. They, they look very relaxed, but their feet are going like hell under yeah. the water. And that's a bit like me, I suspect. And he's not like that. He really is relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, he's, um, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't get fussed about stuff. And this year, going second time round back at Cheltenham, is it, does, are you kind of man that sits pressure on your shoulder? You've been here at Cheltenham before. You, you know what the experience is like. Is, is it, change year on year can you try and enjoy it this time around oh no i think i'll i'll enjoy it i mean it's you bound to i think everybody gets a bit tensed up um i mean trainers do obviously because it's their profession but i think everybody does and it's i have to say it's a pretty it's a somewhat different uh, proposition when you've got a horse that's this popular and this fancy mm -hmm. i mean i've never had a an odds on shot going for a major. I mean, I've only, I don't, was trying to think, I've had one runner in the champion hurdle who didn't, who ran okay, but it wasn't in the money. Um, but I've not had, uh, never had a run in the Gold Cup, never in the Ryanair. Mm -hmm. I've managed to win the champion chase. So, um, but um, they're big races, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm, I mean, I've been doing this for, for <laughs> such a long time, but by some miracle, this. This fellow showed up in my life. It's um, it's remarkable. Yeah, it's a very enviable position. As a, as, an, as, a, as I know, as being an owner, you sort of go through year after year. So maybe this maybe this one might be it. Maybe this one. But it's you you as you've eloquently put it. You've had your ups and downs in racing, and you know what it's like. So it, you can appreciate it so much more when the good ones come around. Yeah, he's. Uh, listen, we we need to see what how long this wonderful <laughs> run can go on for, but it's, it's pretty obvious he's uh, a special horse. I mean, mm. people write about him in sort of eulogistic terms, <laughs> uh, you know, about, you know, the superstar and so on. Well, I guess he needs to actually pull this off at Cheltenham mm -hmm. for him to really, to be that. I mean, mm. in all honesty, it's everything he's done looks as if he should be capable of winning the race. I guess that's why he's three or four to one on. Um, but um, he's he's definitely he's definitely different. Yeah. In in everything, I mean, his demeanour is different, and he's extraordinarily talented. And let's hope let's hope it all goes right on the day. It'll be a hell of a thrill for me, and hopefully everyone else will enjoy it as well. Yeah, yeah I can see how much you do enjoy it. And just finally, I know you're you you like to be creative with your planning. I know last year. At thinking potentially you go to Punchstown and, and I know that it's been difficult this year because of the, the weather and the ground but if we do get some rain next season and things go according to plan will it be a novice chasing campaign that you like to like to see him go next because you did say 
the idea of a gold cup. You've never had a gold cup before. Could that um, be? Could he be your one? Well, there's a there's a long way from a day out at, or an early morning out at Kempton <laughs> um, to to that. So uh, yeah, I, I I I don't know. I think first of all, honestly. Nicky asked me um, in that room up there on the Christ after the Christmas hurdle, so what would you like to do next year? And I said, I have absolutely no idea. Can we get through Cheltenham <laughs> first? And so that's as, that is the only time we've mentioned what we might do next year. Um, so I guess that there are only two alternatives, that if we... Um, if we, get, if we win the champion hurdle, do we have another go? If we get beaten in the champion hurdle, shall we put it right next year? Because it's three <laughs> alternatives. Or shall we go chasing and that's it? I, I have no idea, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, I've, I've thought about it. but I'm we'll sure see. you have. I'm sure it's gone through <laughs> your mind. You'd only be human if you didn't think that. Well, I thought, yeah, we could. what we could do if he wins really impressively is maybe... I don't, so I was going to say. I said, better not. <laughs> it's on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> I was going to say, well, we might win, win the um, Ascot Gold Cup on the way to going off his <laughs> chassis. There you go. There's a wild idea for you. Well, that will, that will uh, keep the fat boys well, quaking is, in their that, boots. No, that's just me being silly. <laughs> well, marvellous. I think you can enjoy it. And I'm sure we, we've enjoyed watching you enjoy, get so much fun out of it with, with such a dear friend as Nikki. And just best of luck. And we're thank enjoying you, the, the Thank the you very you. much. I hope, um, <laughs> I hope he puts on a good show for everybody. He, seem, he seems to enjoy doing that anyway. No, he, thinks, <laughs> he doesn't do he, things the I hard think way. He, I think he thinks it's all a bit of fun, really. <laughs> Well, it's great for us to watch, and thank you, thank you, Michael. Best it's of luck. My pleasure. Thanks Brilliant. so much. Harry, first of all, great to see Love Envoy. Uh, you've campaigned her beautifully, but I'd imagine it's been a bit frustrating with the weather being as it was. That you had to take her out of Warwick. How important was it to bring her to the racetrack today for an away day? Yeah, um, vital because um, we know we've said it all along and saw it last season how she sort of thrives on a racing mm. and. Um, uh, so yeah, very frustrating with the weather that uh, we just didn't want to chance her on, on the drying ground at, at Warwick. And, mm -hmm. um, but bringing her here today is ideal because it's, it's really just because so we're still a fortnight away. It's, mm -hmm. it's, but it's the fact that we don't want her going into Cheltenham having not run since the beginning or set foot on a race course since the beginning of January and, and being too fresh and, and well and, mm -hmm. and over racing. So uh, she's come here, enjoyed herself. Johnny was very happy and she's gone around there nicely and, and relaxed and um, uh, ticked all the boxes. So it's all systems go. Um, for, uh, from a perspective as a trainer, having her from this time last year, what she was like going to Cheltenham this time, this time around, what, what kind of model is she? What, what kind of athlete is she turned into? Well, I think, I mean, she, physically she's, she's developed, she's stronger, uh, mm -hmm. but I think I'm most pleased with mentally how she's becoming more professional. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw that the last day at, at Sandown and, and John even commented again today how she's just, yeah, she's learning, she's sort of really sort of, it sort of clicked what, mm -hmm. what she needs to do. He, he, she went there on there nicely for a circuit, relaxed when he asked her to quicken up the straight, she came alive under him and, mm -hmm. and, and surprised him how much she sort of did quicken on, on that all weather surface as well. So uh, it's, yeah, it's great to sort of hear that he thinks that we're sort of seeing that in, mm -hmm. in her at home as well. And um, obviously she needs to save her best and conserve <laughs> every yeah. ounce of energy for, for when it matters uh, on, on the race course. And, what's looking like being a hugely, obviously, competitive mayor's hurdle. Yeah, I mean, you're standing just in front of the, the Nicky Henderson string. You've obviously got the likes of Epitant and Murray's Rock just from his yard, but then you've yeah. got the Irish contingent. This is going to be one of the races of the festival, mayor's hurdle. I know she's, as you mentioned, in the champion still, but do you think that she's a, she's a mayor that just flourishes with the challenge? You've run her against her, the opposite sex this season. She just yeah. seems to thrive in, on the big stage. Absolutely. I mean, she's just really tough and genuine. I've said mm. it before. How she, I mean, she's just run through a brick wall for you and, and doesn't know what it is to almost um, to, to give in. She's, and, and you can't 
buy that you can't train that she's just got it within her mm. and um so yeah i mean that's why i mean she's got a great record so eight eight from nine i think it is and hopefully yeah she'll need need all of that uh, <laughs> come yeah. the big day in in two weeks time obviously the the dry spell that we've been facing doesn't mm. look like there's gonna be any rain are you concerned about watered good to soft ground and what it might be well i think i mean it, it's obviously cheltenham are going to do uh, the best job they can and mm. i'm sure they're working very hard to, to to create a, a safe and, and fair surface for, for all the horses and and that really in the circumstances that's all we can ask for because yes in an ideal world I'd, I'd love to see some rain for her we know all her best form all her form to date is on a slower surface mm. but uh yeah Cheltenham will will be doing uh their utmost to make sure as I said it'd be yeah ideally hopefully no quicker than good to soft and mm-hmm. um she'll, she'll it'll be a safe surface so she'll take a chance of being well and uh, it would be another uh, another box she'll have to tick, overcome, and uh, mm-hmm. but she's everything we've thrown at her so far. She's sort of yeah uh, got got to come through with flying colours. So hopefully she can continue in that sort of vein. Yeah, and uh, another horse, Jin Coco, probably a little bit frustrating with him was what well, Antipo's favourite for the Betfair Hurdle. He had yeah. to he had to bypass that, you know, for, for the right reasons too. Again, another important day for him to come yeah. out in, in what's been. You know, a short career, but he's, he's looked so progressive and his form must be working out as best as you want, that great wood form. Well, exactly. I mean, we were disappointed on the on the day um, to, to get beat, particularly turning in. He looked mm. like he was he was going very well. And uh, But I like to move it, put up a, a, a very good performance under top weight. And, and clearly he's come out mm. and franked that with a well, even more impressive performance yeah. in, in the Kingwell hurdle. So uh, we'll be watching him with interest on the Tuesday in the champion hurdle. Obviously, we got to wait until Friday for Jim Coco in the, in the county. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I was relieved that we only went up four pounds because uh, mm-hmm. we were a long way clear of the third in the Great Woods. So hopefully that yeah, enables us to still be competitive. And uh, so uh, for him today, even more important to get away because he hasn't set foot on a race course mm-hmm. since November. So, uh, but we were delighted with how he, he followed Love and Boy round. And um, so, yeah, they're all sort of, yeah, tick the boxes, as I say, and uh, all systems go. Yeah, brilliant. And Jim Coco, as I said, he's, he's qualified sort of with flying colours with with that form under, under his belt. Do you think that he's a horse that will improve next year as, as you go on is, is it always going to be a long process has it surprised you that you, you're in a county for example uh, with him? no I think I mean on, on what he, he did in the Great Wood I mean he's, mm. he deserves to be in, in these sort of races and um, uh, hopefully um, with a bit of luck I mean he was just denied at, at Punchestown last spring mm. and, and, and runner up in a Great Wood so he's been, been running in some, some big competitive fields yeah. and uh, Hopefully he's sort of knocking on the door with a bit of luck. Maybe, hopefully, one will go his way soon. Well, two brilliant chances. Um, Harry, great to speak to you. And thank you. Thank you for the No problem. Well, Moira, Andy, lovely to see you. Proud owners, shareholders of Love and Boy. Can you tell me, Moira, first of all, how you managed to get involved with such a wonderful race mare? Well, it was almost um, a little bit of luck. It was luck that we met David Cross frequently at the sort of the uh, hospitality racing because we love a day out at the races. And um, we joined and when we knew Noel was starting his syndicate venture, um, Noel, uh, David sort of talked us into joining up, signing up for the first syndicate. And then um, we had some success with that with Pride mm-hmm. of Lacale, who was trained by Fergal O'Brien. And then, you know, one is never enough. They're like sweeties. Once you, you get the bug, don't you? You get the taste in your mouth. And, um, and um, Love Envoy came up for sale and um, we saw a video of her point to point. And I kind of like the look of her. She had the look even then that she's not mm. going to let anything get past her. And, um, and that's proven to be the case ever since. So we feel so lucky that, you know, it's our very first sort of venture into horse racing, horse mm. ownership with Noel. And we've, we've been so lucky to have such a successful and beautiful horse. Yeah. And and Andy, obviously getting involved with, with horses, you've, your expectations are always such, you know, enjoy the day out and yeah. enjoy getting to know other people, see them on the track. Mm. But this experience must top them, must top anything that your your dreams had ever imagined. Yes, yes. With the first horse, we were just interested in going to some of the, the local courses and then meeting the people in the syndicate. There's mm. 10 in each mm. horse syndicate. Uh, and then there was the thought of going to Cheltenham. And there were people there saying, well, I thought I'd see a horse at Cheltenham, but not my horse at Cheltenham. Yeah, and so last year was, was, was fantastic. It really was incredible. Mm-hmm. And now we've got yeah. a year on, we're mm-hmm. higher expectation of having to return to Cheltenham, but we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, and imagine having that Cheltenham Festival winner. Tell me about that buzz, that experience of 
being there even in the preliminaries just as you say even just being connected to a horse running but then mm. the winning experience what what what, oh, what was well, that like it starts off with all the nerves because you're, you're like and then you're watching the race almost like this you know behind yeah. because you most of all of course you want your horse to come home safe more than more than a win you want them to be safe um but winning and winning with such a wonderful group of people it's um you know it's lovely to have shared experiences are always better mm -hmm. arguably aren't they mm -hmm. and to share that overwhelming joy and you know throw your hands up in the air as your horse comes in and to give Johnny his first Cheltenham win it was just the ride of a lifetime and I can't believe we we might having a reprise of that yeah. this year as well and, and finally we've seen her here she looks brilliant today um, what do you think about the race at hand this year because it's going to be competitive not just the Irish but you've seen a couple of Nicky Henderson's runners as well who do you think is your biggest danger um, well, I think most of our owners think perhaps Marie's rock. We were a little bit worried about Brandy Love because, of course, she's the only horse we've ever lost to. Mm -hmm. um, but looking at her last race, she's perhaps a little bit rusty. So I think we're thinking Marie's rock, perhaps. But Definitely. obviously, you know, honeysuckle, you've got, to, you've got to pay respect to an awful lot of ha horses in that race. And what we do know is that win or lose, like we know our girl's going to mm -hmm. like give her all. She'll just run through a brick wall for you. So she'll leave yeah. it all out there.